everybody, it's Courtney. I'm back here with another project for Trinity Stamps. Today I'm going to be making a card using three different stamp sets. I'm going to be using Magical Wizards, Wizard Friends, and Magical Sentiments. And I'm starting off with a panel here. This is a piece of Nina Solar White, and this is cut down to three and three quarters by five. I'm going to go ahead and stamp and mask out my images. Now I had some help with this card because I'm not familiar with this theme. So thank you, Amanda, for helping me. Um, so I'm stamping this image first because I want her to be wearing this. So I'll stamp that first, mask it off, and then I'll stamp her. Anything you want in front of another, you want to stamp and mask first. So this will, once I remove the masks, it looks a little crazy right now, but once I remove everything, it will appear as if she's wearing this instead of the outfit that she has on in the original stamp itself. I'll go ahead and stamp out my other two little characters here and I'll also mask those out. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Masking Paper and I am stamping with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because I'm going to be Copic coloring them. Now I wanted them to be holding something so after I mask them I'm going to go ahead and stamp the little broom right above kind of right over his hand to make it look like he's holding it and this little wand in this other little guy's hand. I don't know their names, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and mask those out too because I'm going to be doing some ink blending in the background. Now these are really teeny tiny masks, so I don't have, a, normally if I was using a regular ink blending tool, these would come up no matter what masking paper I use, but I'm going to be using the blendabilities today and some distress oxides. So I'm starting off with the stormy sky and I'm just putting a light layer down. I'm not worried about it blending. I just want to have a little bit of color down before I do my stenciling. So I'm going to take a brick stencil here and I'm going to tape tape the stencil directly to my card panel but to the back of it so these little pieces of tape won't show and this is just post-it note tape and then I'll go ahead and bring in that chipped sapphire starting from the top and working my way down about halfway down and then the black soot will be on the top I don't know whether you guys have a problem or maybe I just have a bad ink pad but my the black soot for the distress oxide is just not black no matter what I use no matter if I stamp with it or I ink blend with it it's just not black my regular distress ink is so I don't know whether you guys have that same problem but once I had that down I blended that out with the chip sapphire then back to that stormy sky and I'm bringing that down almost to the bottom of the panel but not quite all the way and then I will remove my stencil and those little pieces of post-it note tape I did let this dry for just a minute or so while I put everything away before I remove the rest of my masks just because I know the Distress inks stay wet a little bit longer and can tear your paper when you remove those masks. Next we'll move on to the Copic coloring of our little characters here and oh first I stamped his little glasses. Now we'll move on to the Copic coloring. So for the first two, I'm gonna color their skin tones the same way. And I'm only using three color blends on this entire card. So I'm gonna start off with my lightest color, map out my darkest areas, which will pretty much just be underneath where their hair is hanging over their face. Then go in with my darkest color, then the mid-tone and extend that out a little bit. And then finally going back to that lightest color and just blending everything out. Don't forget about their little hands too. For this guy over to the right, I'm going to make him just a little bit lighter. So I'm using some of the same colors here, but bringing in a lighter color, the E50, and not using that E04, but just doing my shading the same way, concentrating the darkest area being underneath his hair. For, for their hair, I'm going to color all of these different. So for this first one off to the left, I want his hair to be pretty dark brown, so I'm going in right with my darkest color. I tend to go in with my darkest color first when I'm doing hair, and I'm just putting a little bit of shading where his hair is parted and on either side where his little sideburn looking things are, and then extend that out with the E57 and just fill in that highlight with the E55 going to color her hair pretty much the same way. Hers is a little bit different because it's wavy and she has little bangs, but I'm going to bring in the E18 as my darkest color 
and again just putting those darkest areas where her hair is parted and where my flicks are I kind of move them in the direction of her hair so on the top part they'll go off to the side and then as her bangs come down I'm kind of swooping them down where her bangs are extending those flicks with the E15 and then finally I will fill in those highlight areas with the E11 now my friend did tell me that this little guy off to the right is a redhead so we're gonna color him a redhead starting off with the E09 which will be the darkest color Again, doing my shading the same way for his hair as I did for that first one. A little bit where his hair is parted and where his hair is kind of swooping over his little ears there. Extending that out with the YR18. And then finally for my highlight color will be a Y38. And that will kind of just brighten everything up a little bit. For their outfits, I know their shirts are gray and their pants are either dark gray or black from what I could see from pictures that I looked up on Google. So I'm gonna go right in with my darkest color just because of the cool grays blending so well, I don't feel the need to saturate my paper first. For the shirt, I'm just putting the C7 down very sparingly and it's mostly gonna be that C5, just leaving a little bit of a highlight in the center of their shirts and on the top of their little sleeves there, I'm just doing a center highlight, make it nice and easy. For their pants, I'm going to use the same color combination, but I'm just going to put a little bit more of that C7 down than I did for their shirts and just doing my shading the same exact way as far as the C5 and just leaving a very small area for that C3. And I will color the shirt and pants for that other little guy the same exact way. For their shoes, I just went in solid with black, not doing any shading for that. For her, I wanted this to be a little bit darker, so I am using the black, which is the 100, and I'm just laying out my darkest areas, which will be underneath her little collar, on the bottom part of her sleeves, on either side, because we are using a center highlight here, and underneath the little book that she is holding. And I'm just doing a few little flicks on either side towards the bottom. It is part of the image, so just use those lines that are within the image to kind of guide you as far as where your shading should be. Next I'll blend that black out with the C7 which is really really dark. It's it's not too far off from black itself and my highlight color will be the C5. Now because I use the black you may need to go over some of these areas more than usual just because it's kind of hard to blend that black out sometimes but in the end it does appear to be black even though we used a lot of gray. So for their little ties, I know I was told that these are maroon and gold, so I'm just putting a little line of a maroon type color and then I'll go in with just a little bit of gold too. For her collar, I was told that this should be maroon, <laughs> so I am doing a little bit of shading just because this is a larger area and just concentrating my darkest areas where this would be gathered in the center and my highlight is actually more of a red. Now for his little broom there I'm going to bring in some E30 markers and initially my lightest color for the broom part was going to be an E30 but I realized once I started the coloring that was going to be a little bit too light so I ended up having my lightest color as the E31. That's the great thing about starting with your lightest color. You can always change your mind because it's easily covered up. For the broom handle I'm also just going to keep out those E30 markers but my darkest color will be the E37 just to kind of differentiate this, this between the handle and the broom part of it itself and I'm just doing a little bit of shading here. For the wand I'm going to be coloring that in just solid E37. I don't want to take the chance of blending in such a small area because more than likely I will go out of the lines because of messy. For the book I have those E30 markers out. I'm just going to use those as well just putting a little bit of shading on the binding of the book as well as underneath her hand that would cast a shadow on the book. Blend that out with the mid-tone and then finally the lightest color. 
Now I wanted to, they're kind of just floating there. So I wanted to add just a little bit of shadow and I'm starting with a C3, which is a lot lighter than I normally do, but I don't want this to blend in with their pants and their shoes. So I'm just adding C3 and C1 just to give them a little bit of a shadow so it doesn't look like they're kind of just floating there. So once the coloring was done, we'll go ahead and add the sentiment. And I'm using one of the sentiments from the Magical Sentiment stamp set. I'm actually using two. So I'm going to treat my card panel there with my anti-static tool. I did test the area just to make sure that Distress Oxide was completely dry before I did this. I just sprinkled on embossing powder without inking anything just to make sure it didn't stick. Then I'll go ahead and stamp my image, or I'm sorry, my sentiment with the Versafine Onyx Black Ink, sprinkle on some clear embossing powder and heat set that. I must not have cleaned out my stamp that well the last time I used this, and I did have some fuzzies. I don't know whether maybe it was from a baby wipe, I don't know, but once it was embossed, you couldn't really tell. For the remaining part of the sentiment, I'm going to put this with a black, uh, white heat embossed on a black strip. So I wanted to mat this panel. So I'm taking a piece of black cardstock and I'm just cutting this a little bit bigger than the card panel itself. And that remaining piece of black cardstock that I have there, I will use that for the remaining part of my sentiment. So I'll treat that with my anti-static tool. The rest of my sentiment will be stamped with Versamark ink, and I'll switch over to some white embossing powder and heat set that, and then cut that into a strip. And this will just be popped up underneath that magic. Once everything was completely cut and ready to assemble, I took a top folding A2 size note card and I adhered everything with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. When my panel is not, when it's a little bit smaller than the card base itself, I like to use a wet glue. I like to use the Tombow Mono Multi Glue regardless, but it gives you a little bit of time in case it's not completely centered. You have a little bit of time to adjust anything that you need to adjust. So for the main panel here, you can tell that I didn't really center this correctly. So being it was the wet glue, I could kind of just slide that up to where it needed to be on the card panel itself. Once that was done, I took some scotch foam tape and just popped up the remaining part of that sentiment and just centered that directly underneath the magic word. You can see there I missed a little spot there with my glue and I just squeezed in a little bit. And that is the card for today, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by and have a great day.